Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa lahu ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, قُلْ لَكُمْ مِعَادُ يَوْمٍ لَا تَسْتَأْخِرُونَ عَنْهُ سَاعَةً وَلَا تَسْتَقُدِمُونَ For you is the appointment of a day. You will not remain thereafter an hour, nor will you proceed it. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقِّ فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور. O mankind, indeed the promise of Allah is truth. So let not the worthy life delude you and be not deceived about Allah by the deceiver, the Satan. It's been said that the following verses, the last verse was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last verse was revealed to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَّا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And fear a day when you will be returned to Allah. Then every soul will well be compensated for what it earned, and they will not be treated unjustly. At that day when we return to our Lord, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ On that day, in these two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said people will flee from their family members, from their brothers, sisters, parents, children, spouses, even in the Sahih Muslim, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, from Muslim Imam Ahmad, that Mary, Maryam, will say to Isa Alayhi Salam, son, and he would say, Inni la ughni anki al min Allahi shay'a. I can't help you, mother, with anything today. With the Sahih, and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told Fatima, Ya Fatima, salini al ma shi'ti, fa inni la ughni anki yawm al qiyamati min Allahi shay'a. Ask me whatever you want, daughter, today, because in the day of judgment, I can't help you with anything. Nothing will help you at that day or will benefit you, your wealth, your children, your family, your degree, nothing. The only thing will benefit you that day. <laughs> the one who will come to Allah with a sound heart. The one who will be saved from hellfire and enter Jannah. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ Those who will be saved from hellfire and led to enter Jannah have attained the greatest success. But how this will happen? How, what do you think will bring tranquility and safety to you in that day? How you will be saved from hellfire and enter paradise? Allah answered this and he did not let it for our guessing or, you know, to guess it out. وَالْوَزْنُ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْحَقُّ فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَظْلِمُونَ In Surah Al-A'raf, and there are several verses in the same line, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in that day, waiting of deeds on that day will be the truth. <coughs> so those whose scale are heavy, it is they who will be successful. And those whose scales are light, the scales of the good deeds are light. 
either because they didn't offer much or because the skill of the bad deed is so heavy that it made the good deeds so light, look so light, like nothing. Those are the ones who will lose themselves by ending up in hellfire. So if this is the case, I would like to say a few words about this concept. Hopefully something that you can register in your heart and your mind and you think about it so often. Because as you heard in the end of the previous talk, it's not about information. It's about transferring this ilm and knowledge into actions. There are certain interesting principles in Islam in regard to the concept of good deeds and bad deeds. And there is a reason behind that concept. Behind these principles, I will end my talk with it. For example, one of the interesting principles that in Islam told us that any good deeds you do, it will be multiplied immediately. Multiplied to 10 times and up. So the minimum you get for any single good deeds is 10 rewards. You never get one reward for one good deed. You take 10 for each one. And that the starting point 10. 10 to 700 to more than 700. Man jaa'a bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَلَا يُجْزَىٰ إِلَّا مِثْلَهَا وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ Those who come with one good deed, it will be multiplied to ten. And those who come with a sin, it will be count as one, not as ten. That's why in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi hadith ibn Abbas, fi may arwiya an rabbih, that Allah have made a rule in regard to the good deeds and bad deeds. In Allah katabas sayyat wal hasanat. Yani there is a rules how it will be documented in your record. Then in Nabi Sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you do a good deed, it will be multiplied ten to seven hundred to way more than seven hundred. Ila Abafin Kathira. And if you do one sin, it will be written as one single sin. One sin Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the companions, is it too hard? to earn 2,500 rewards every day. 2,500 good deeds? Yani kind of a lot. Then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, if after each and every salah, you say, Subhanallah, 10 times. Alhamdulillah, 10 times. Allahu Akbar, 10 times. He said, that's what? 150 with your tongue and 1,500 in your scale. Five times a day, 10 times, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, that's 150 times 10, that's 1,500. Then in Nabi Sallallahu said, and before you go to sleep, you say, subhanAllah, 33 times, alhamdulillah, 33 times, Allahu Akbar, 34 times. That's 100 with your tongue and 1,000 in your skills on the Day of Judgment. That's 2,500 just for these two simple tasks. Then he made a beautiful comment, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, and who among you commit 2,500 sins a day? <laughs> Maybe there are some but, uh, these days, but I hope yani, not many. And I'm not talking yet about praying five daily prayers. I'm not talking about Jazakallah Khair, Salaamu Alaikum, Alhamdulillah Rabb. I'm not talking about any other deeds, only these two simple tasks. It's amazing that some deeds are multiplied to 700 and more. There is people there, there is among us people, the default is not 10, the default is 700. And Nabi Sallallahu said, whoever perfect his Islam, the multiplication start from 700. If you perfect your Islam, it doesn't count anymore 10, anything it will be 700 and up. How can you multiply that? How can you raise them 10 if you wanted to increase the 10? You look at the time of your good deeds, the time like the prayer in the middle of the night, the prayer, you know, to stand for the truth in a time where people stand up for the truth. They don't speak truth to power. That's a time where reward is higher. In the time of fitan, when you hold into your religion, your reward is much higher than other days. Ramadan is coming. The, the, the deeds are why? 
uh, very, uh, the reward of it much, much higher than any other time in the year, in Laylatul Qadr and so forth. Time, place. I have no doubt in my heart. Those who hold to their Islam in a land where Muslims are minority, prosecuted, were basically being attacked, are much higher in reward than those who live in comfort and safety. A salah in the masjid is multiplied than a salah in the house, the faridah. Also the deed itself, some deeds by nature, they are high in reward. Ibn Umar said, a sadaqah, charity, start from 700. Yani the $10, the $100, the $1,000 you donate to Ikna or you donate to one of these organizations here, it starts from 700 and up in your masjid, whatever. Also the person, the more ikhlas you have, the more reward you do. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said the best of sadaqah is the one that you give when you're still young. You don't, you're not afraid of death, nor you're afraid of and while you're afraid of poverty, because you don't, you're still not very rich, you know, you worry about the future, you want to save, but you still, you give from that money. These are things will make your deeds multiply. And by the way, if you look at these things, if you make the opposite of them, it will make your sin greater. I don't believe that the sin can be multiplied. But I do believe that the size of the sin, the severity of the sin, the punishment of the sin can be greater based on the time, the place, the person, the sin of the scholar is not like the sin of the jahil. The sin of a shaykh al-zani is not like a young man and so forth. And that's the way to basically reconciliate between the khilaf that is was mentioned by some of the Salaf about is that sins are multiplied. Because some of them said a sin in Mecca is a hundred times double, for instance. The second principle, it's beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Innal hasanati sayyat. Good deeds erase bad deeds, but not the opposite. Anytime you do a bad deeds, you follow it with the good deeds, it will take care of it. Ya Rasulullah, in Nabi Sallallahu said, follow bad deeds with the good deeds, it will erase it, take care of it. Ya Rasulullah, I did something terrible. What did you do? What did that man did? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I kissed and I touched a woman that I'm not supposed to, to do that so with her. She's not halal for me. In Nabi Sallallahu said, go pray to rakahs. And he recited the verse. By the way, the man came repenting and regretting. It's not like, oh, khalas, okay, we got it, two rakahs, it's easy. Uh, don't misunderstand the hadith. And you have to balance it. Based on the size of your sin, the size of your good deeds. That's why Umar radiallahu an, when he showed a lot of bit of objections and a moment of heat and excitement to the Prophet sallallahu in the incident of Al-Hudaybiyyah, what Umar said, قَالْ فَعَمِلْتُ لَهَا أَعْمَالًا كَالْجِبَالِ I made good deeds like in the size of mountains to erase that sin that he considered something major, big. But be careful. Good deeds raise the bad deeds when it comes to between you and Allah, not between you and other human beings. You steal somebody's money, then you go make Hajj and Umrah. You know, you cheat uh, uh, people and you do sin that harm other people and you say, SubhanAllah, before you go to sleep. That doesn't erase that sin. And nothing will erase sins like Tawheed. فَإِنَّ نُورَ التَّوْحِيد, The light of Iman and Tawheed will remove any darkness of any sin or any shirk. The third principle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and told us, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Those who repent to Allah and change the course of their life, change their lifestyle, what Allah will do to them? Will replace the bad deeds with good deeds. If it's a million bad, it's a million sin, Allah replace it and make it a million rewards understood and take care of that, erase that completely from your record.
It's interesting how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so generous that in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the person that all these sins I forgive it and I give it in return for it good deeds. He said, Ya Rabbi, there is other sin, even I don't see it right now in my record. If you can bring everything, if the case can be replaced, I would like all of them to be replaced. By the way, some of the scholar rahimahullah said, Tabdiru sayyat, the replacement of the bad deeds to good deeds. It means that as Allah, basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow you, will inspire you to use your wealth, your body, the talents that you use to use it in bad deeds, you will start using in good deeds and doing something good. You will be more excited about doing good. Like not the before, you're excited about doing the haram. Now of repentance and you know changing the course of your life, Allah inspired you always to love to do what is right. Number five or four, which is very, very unique. In Nabi Sallallahu told us that when you intend to do something good, and you don't do it because whatever reason prevented you from doing it, you intention there, you want to do it. But something happened to you prevented from doing it. You know what? I want to pray in jama'ah, but my car broke down. You take the reward as if you exactly prayed in jama'ah in the masjid. You want to go to hajj, you got sick. Your fam one of your family got sick. You get the reward as if you exactly went to hajj. Amazing. Type what if you intend, but you didn't do any effort? Just my intention to wake up in the night, but I didn't turn on the clock or alarm or anything like that. I never really have, you know, I never took the means to, to do it. You will see that the majority of the fuqaha said you still get the reward. Akhtar al fuqaha you still get reward for it. As for the sin, if you intend to do something haram and you lift it for the sake of Allah because you fear Allah, Allah reward you for that fear of Him. And if you intend to do something haram and you didn't do it because you know what, I'm kind of busy, I'm not going to do it now. You will not be sinful. You only be sinful if you said it or you did it. That's when you get sin for it. Unless you take actions. You take your action, you will be sinning according to the intention of yours and the action that you took. Like for example, somebody intend to steal a bank or steal a house. He went all the way to the house. He tried to break in. You know what? The alarm goes off. He ran away. He, get, he didn't get the sin of the exact stealing, but he get the sin of the movement, of the trying, of breaking the privacy of someone. He still gets sin for that. That's why Nabi Sallallahu said, Kilahuma finnar. The two people who fought one another. Because he's sinning for carrying weapons and, and fighting his Muslim brother. Otherwise, he doesn't take the exact sin of a killer or a murderer. Number five, any sin that you do by mistake, it's forgiven. Out of complete ignorance, it's forgiven. And ac accidentally, it's forgiving. It will not be count against you. And I want to end with this few seconds left for me by saying this. My message to you today with showing this beautiful principle in Islam and Sharia is not to undermine the dangers of sins. No. You mistake if you think that's what my point is. My point is, is to show you how, how so much opportunity you have by doing good deeds. How great good deeds are. Go ahead and do as much good deeds as you can. A shaitan, if he convince you to do a sin, he win one thing, that he made one sin. But he convince you not to do a good deed, he made you lose 10 rewards. It's a better deal for the shaitan to make you not to do good deeds than to do a sins. He's much smarter than what you do, what you think. That's why one of the message of my message to you today, you know what, don't ever hold back. If you get opportunity to do anything good, do it. Don't hesitate. The more you do, the more you build good deeds, good deeds, until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you see that in your skill on the day of judgment. And that moment you will be so proud of yourself. So proud of yourself.
Don't let it go. You pass by a, a donation box, you go to the masjid, pray to rak'ah, say something good, say astaghfirullah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. Don't hold back. There is millions of rewards you can earn every day. So that's the, the message I really want every one of us to think about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised a great future for all of us. And I will end with this verse. That the Shaqiti rahimahullah said, هذه الآية تكتب بماء العيون. This ayah verse has a letter and it should be written with the ink. If the ink of, that you use to write this verse should be taken from the water of your eyes. And how much valuable it is. ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذين اصطفينا من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله ذلك هو الفضل الكبير Then we will give those we have chosen from our servants, the book. We'll give the book to those who have, we have chosen. Allah chosen. How many categories? ظالمٌ لنفسه Wrong himself. And among them and those based moderate. And the one who uh, 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 hastened to good deeds. So the three categories are chosen by Allah. There is still honor to all three. The sinner and the good doer and the excellent doer. All, not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end of the verse, He said, All of them will enter Jannah. All of them. That's a great news to all of us. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you to take advantage of this conference. This coming Ramadan, every moment of your life to add more good deeds to your life. Because this is the real winner in the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ja'anna wa iyaakum min alladheena yakthru amaluhum salih. Sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Thank you very much and have a great night and enjoy the rest of the weekend.